go. Good evening, everybody. Tonight, welcome for a very special guest, former guy who lived here in Chicago. That's who we know him from. He doesn't live here anymore, Rush Wolf. And of course, we've all been consumed for the last couple of months with what's going on in Eretz Yisrael, davening, sending money, tillim, mitzvahs. And I think every Tuesday night since we've had somebody give us a different perspective, people have been to Israel, people involved in the programming, and I was very much excited about having Mo on, and he agreed to come on, and he's just returned a couple of weeks ago from a tour with the IDF. So Mo, first of all, on behalf of all of Klal Yisrael, thank you for your service. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we're looking forward to hearing about it. So introduce yourself. Give us a little background, if you don't mind, where you're from, you know, a little bit of your life story. Sure. Okay. So I am Mo Wolf, originally from Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I uh, kind of went on, on a bit of a journey myself in life. I was brought up uh, in a Chabad home, then went to Yeshiva in Chicago, New York, um, you know, Detroit. Um, so moving from there, I spent a year in Sweden on Schlichus, so by the Namdars, if anybody knows of them. Um, but uh, anyways, from there, uh, I started my uh, my kind of my uh, journey in IT, my career life of IT. So that's what I do now. Uh, but the year after Sweden, I was in New York. And at the end of that year, I was kind of like at a crossroads of what I'm going to do next. Um, and uh, it was either between going to Australia to study smicha, to study, to become a rabbi, or to go to the army. And for me personally, I, I you know, I, I spoke to a few people and you know, came to the conclusion that uh, military service would be the best for me, specifically in Israel. So just give us a um, sense. What year is this? This is five years ago, 10 years ago? That is, uh, that's in 2010. Okay. So I went on birthright. I went in an all, you know, an all guys birthright group, um, which was mostly Chabad guys. Um, and from there, me and one other um, fellow guy from, who was in Shiva with me actually decided to join the IDF. So I joined into a Haredi, into a from military unit. Um, it's called Natsah It's an it's an all infantry, it's a light infantry unit. Um, and that's where I spent uh, 14 months altogether. It was a total of 14 months. So seven months of uh, rigorous basic training and then advanced military infantry training. Um, and then seven months of active duty. Did you um, speak Hebrew? I'm just trying to get to say, when you yeah. came in, how was your Hebrew? Uh, my Hebrew, I was kind of breaking my teeth, but I, I did have a better foundation than my other colleagues who uh, came from the States, or most of my other colleagues who came from out of Israel. Um, but yeah, basically, and Netzach Yehuda, so actually the reason why it's only 14 months of service is actually because they shaved off six months i think it's either four or six months um it's four months from an ulpan which is there's a special base that they send uh foreign soldiers to to uh basically study hebrew in the army mm -hmm. um, so they kind of shave that off because that all the commanders and the officers are female so they're not going to send the the from guys uh to the the base where all the commanders and officers are female, simply because it's not snoot, it's, it's not sneeze, um, in this particular setting. Um, so we end up learning kind of on the job. So I, I walked around with a little notebook <laughs> to like a, literally a tiny, one of these tiny notepads. And whenever I had, I heard a word that I didn't understand, understand, I wrote it down and I asked a buddy, oh, what does this mean? Sometimes they gave me a bogus meaning and <laughs> laughed at me afterwards. And sometimes they gave me the right meaning. So, you know, when I was lucky. 
but uh, no, nah, they were they were good guys. Um, but yeah, that's basically. Uh, I mean, so you you went to the army. This was like you said, 2013, 10, 12 years ago. You finish your service. Did you plan to make Aliyah? Like, was this something that you would always uh, aspire to? To join the IDF? To live in Israel? Yes, no. So for me, it wasn't necessarily an aspiration to join the IDF. Uh, you know, going through more or less the Chabad Yeshiva system, I wanted to, you know, I was kind of planning on becoming a rabbi, you know, a Chabad Shliach, and, you know, going through the emotions and having my own community. Uh, but again, for me personally, by that time in 2010, when I was, I think it was 19, 20, I was 20, um, I decided that, or 21, I decided that it was more uh, appropriate for me to do something else. Um, so I kind of, that's where I branched off. Um, so when you finish your service, what are your obligations? Just give us a sense of that. What is your military obligation once your active duty time is up? Uh, and then what? <laughs> like what happens then? So it's just goodbye, yeah. thank you, and keep your uniform. So it's interesting. It's interesting that you ask. But yes, that's kind of how it is for volunteers. Because I was a volunteer to my original service, um, at the end of it, they were kind of like, yeah, we, we trained you for this long and you know you served for however long but we're not like we're if you're just going back to your uh, your country of origin then we're not gonna we're not gonna keep you here we're not gonna keep you serving and keep you coming back so they essentially tell you to give everything back mm -hmm. um and you they don't give you reserve duty because you're a foreigner now as soon as i got out of the army service active duty I actually made Aliyah. Uh, that was kind of a plan. I did want to eventually go to Israel if possible. Now, if I didn't have, you know, community or whatever, my own, um, or post of my own. But basically, um, I ended up uh, going, you know, making Aliyah and then deciding to try and get into Milim, into reserve, you know, a reserve unit. That's actually harder than you think especially at the time when I was trying to, they were actually trying to lo lower the amount of reservists in the mm -hmm. army because they were trying to like save on cash. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, and I think that's a little bit of how we got to where we are. Um, just slowly but surely, just lowering the amount of reservists and lowering the amount of reservists, um, not having as many people um, on hand at any particular given time um but uh, that's okay so, so life takes you you wind up back you've lived in chicago for a while now you're living in toronto going along doing your thing and october 7th happens just you know everybody we ask like when did you learn about this it's young uh how did you learn about it and what was your distinctive immediate reaction so i gotta backtrack for a second sure because I went on a trip, on a family trip to to Vegas to my brother mm -hmm. for Sukkot, the first part of Sukkot. And while I was there, I happened to purchase, uh, happened to walk into REI and purchase, uh, it's like a camping and sport sporting goods store. Uh, and I bought myself a pair of waterproof hiking boots. Um, and I had no idea that these boots were going to be used for military service that was not on my mind um but anyways, Whereas you thought you're done with the idf i mean that was your history now, yeah but it yeah. wasn't something that you were thinking about. okay so you're in vegas in vegas uh we went like we went to bryce canyon and then we went down to phoenix where my parents are so phoenix we're in simchas torah we're in uh i walk into or shmina Atzeris. I walk into Chabad of Phoenix um, and just I see some people in the lobby before they entering into the sanctuary. I see people and they're just uh, like have this look on them. A couple guys, a few guys had, had this look on them that something went wrong. And I step up to the there's they have an off duty police officer there 
um, pretty much every Shabbos and every Yomtev for sure. And I ask him, if, like, what's going on? Is there something that I need to know about? And he, he basically just told me what has happened until then. I, I kind of was like, nah, that, that can't be. Just doesn't sound right. Um, but, uh, you know, as the day progressed, and I'm sure this is, you know, the same for many people. Um, as the day progressed, as the holiday progressed, it was just uh, this, this can't something like what in the world, how could it be that there's such a major failure of defense, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, people asking me if I, if I've been called back and, and like, I don't have my phone on me because I'm not a reservist. And if I'm not a reservist, then I don't need to have my phone on me on, on Shabbos and Yom Tiv. Um, anyways, after, after Shabbos, after Simchas Torah, I uh, I open up my phone and I just I see the amount of text messages in my in my uh, groups with my fellow soldiers and everything going on and I see the news and the sense of urgency that I had to drop everything literally drop everything and get on a plane was beyond reason uh, just just a sense of urgency. And I know it's, it's everyone. It was everyone. Like she wanted to do something. Um, so what is the process here. for that? Can you just show up and say, hi, here's my ID. Put me in. Coach. Can. How does that work? Well, it's not so simple. Obviously <laughs> some, some of my friends got into C one thirties, you know, if leaving from Greece, they somehow made it to, I don't, I don't exactly know the full story of those, you know, that was that was literally on Yom Tiv, I think that that uh, that that happened. But um, you can't just walk up to a plane and and show your ID. Um, there were planes where if you had an actual text message or an actual uh, it's called a Tzav Shmona, which is the the call the call to come. Um, it's a, it, but it's an actual letter. If you had that or you know, a text from your commander, then you could get onto a plane um, on an LL, an LL jet. Um, and there were no lines pretty much for soldiers at that point. It was, you're, you're a soldier, you're going back, get in. Um, and like just the outpouring of volunteers that were assisting and sending gear and sending everything to, to the soldiers, it, it was just something to see uh, it still is honestly it's still still going on and it's it, every day i see it happening and in, in my in my different groups that i'm in um but no for me it was a little bit difficult because i had to find i, I didn't have because i i, I was a, a foreigner and didn't have reserve i was actually exempt from reserve duty um at that but like at when this war broke out, it was more difficult to get on a flight. I had to actually produce uh, some sort of either a sponsor, I had to get a sponsor, or I had to get some sort of a letter, which I didn't have a letter, but I did have, uh, you know, text messages documenting that I was in talks with the unit. And the moment, the moment that I got there, I had a unit to go to already. So I had a guy in a unit that was telling me, you come here, or we'll get you in. Um, so you reached out to them or they reached out to you? Well, what initiated that? So I reached out to, see, again, I'm in I'm in a group. I'm in a group called Nevut. Uh, I'm a member of Nevut, which is actually an organization started by a Chabad guy, a former lone soldier as well, lone IDF soldier, uh, who's, he just, he's an amazing person. And he started this uh, kind of like a, uh, what's the word, like a guild, I don't know, just like a, a group of former lone IDF soldiers, Jewish guys to, you know, and they have chapters, different places, and they make meetings, um, and they have, you know, psychological assistance, you know, for people who need it. Um, so 
they they were posting and i saw a guy like i was following it very like every message i was reading and one guy over there he told me oh i've I have a place and they're looking for guys. So they're looking for soldiers. They need combat soldiers. So I messaged him and I asked him, what's the process? And he gave me someone's phone number. And I, that was basically what happened. I got in touch with, with his guy. Got you just call him and say, hi, guy. I'm a trained combat soldier. I, I have a rank. I, I have a number. And put me, I'm I didn't ready. Call, <laughs> I didn't call. The, the Israeli army pretty much runs off of WhatsApp, apparently. <laughs> uh, um, and Microsoft. Interesting. Like that. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, so I messaged him and he, you know, he asked for my, or actually I messaged him and told him, this is my name. This is my, my army ID number. And that was pretty much all he needed. Um, and I mean, does he have to like there. check you out? I mean, you could imagine this, it could be open to some phony who was just calling up and say, hi, I'm a marksman or whatever. Well, I mean, if once you give your army ID, they have like ah, a so CRM. They have yeah. a CRM. Uh, it's <laughs> kind of like a, I think it's a home built Salesforce. So like, it took. I think the army made its own thing. Okay, so, so you got you got a place to go to. This is how long did it take for all this to work out from right after October seven? How long did it take? Um, I think I was there the twenty third of so October. About, yeah. I was there on the 23rd I landed. Yeah. So you um, land, you flew from Las Vegas? I flew from Toronto. Toronto. So you're living in Toronto? I, yeah, we, yeah. We made it back. We made it back. I still had some work to do and I had to figure out how I'm going to get there. I also had to figure out how I'm going to pay my bills until the army decides <laughs> to pay me, if they decide to pay me. I wasn't what even sure. What does your wife have to say about all this? Uh, she was very supportive of it as long as I could Pay our bills well, <laughs> essentially. So, so you got that worked uh, out. So you get on a plane from Toronto. You land in Menguri, and it's two weeks in. The chaos is raining. Everything is going nuts. And you find your base. Like, what do you what do you do now? It's like, hi, I'm here. I got my lunchbox. I'm ready to go. So, actually, it's funny. I land in Menguri. The airport is fairly, pretty much empty. The streets, the highways were pretty much empty still at that point now it's now it's pretty much back to normal but i know I, I went i went to stay by my wife's aunt for a couple of nights while i figured out like bank account and a couple other things that i had to figure out before starting the army once i started the army or before i got there i went into i went to my base which wasn't actually a base in this case it was actually a uh yeshu it was actually a uh, small Jewish town in the Judea Samaria region in the West Bank. You just jumped like right in. I mean, are you still like fresh with your skills? No, I, mean, you, I was not. Have... Definitely not. Um, but of course, as like as a former combat soldier, I'm always kind of rehearsing scenarios in my brain. Um, I, I I've never actually seen combat. I'm, I myself have never seen combat. I've been in a uh, few situations where it could have tipped, the scales could have tipped, but that was it. Um, I served in in Janine, my active duty, or near Janine, went into Janine many times, which I don't know if you've seen the news now, Janine is a very, very hot area. When I was there, it was thankfully extremely quiet, both thankfully and I also... I trained for such a long time, I wanted to, uh, you know, I want to use my skills, but at the same time, I'm lucky that I wasn't active when I was there. Uh, now I was based in the southern region of, I was in South Har Hebron, so Drom Har Hebron, so South uh, Hebron Mountain, South Hill. Southern so you Hebron joined Hills. a regular Israeli IDF unit, or this was a special unit for foreigners for guys over age 30 i mean did you just threw you right in there with the group of guys no this this is a regular it's actually a regular unit um it's always uh every year they train and every i don't know how many times um it's a new new unit to me so i'm still learning about it but generally in when it's not wartime um they're performing different uh 
operations, you know, missions in that area in the uh, the Chachmar Yehuda, which is the the Yehuda region, the Judea region of the West Bank of Israel. Um, they're performing different operations and they're on a base. They usually, they'll take over a base where active duty soldiers are on, uh, either they're on a vacation or they're on uh, doing service somewhere else, um, or they're doing, usually they're doing training actually. They're going for training for a couple of weeks. So this unit will take over. Um, so that's, they'll go, we'll go into, you know, Arab uh, villages and we'll, uh, Two different activities, operational activities. Uh, okay, so you arrived there. Yeah. What was the what was the tone like when you met me with your unit? What was the morale like? What was the the feeling? You talked about the empty airport and highways. What was the feeling with the with your fellow soldiers? Were they so, yeah. inspired by your presence? Were they? Were, what give us a sense of that? It's uh it's an interesting question. When I got there, I came with one other guy from Miami. Um, and there were only five or six other guys there at that time. Um, and everybody was just like, let's just, let's get to it. Let's, let's do things. Let's we'll get things done. Um, but in reality, all we did and all most of the, actually people don't realize this, but most combat soldiers in Israel right now are just doing Shmir roads, are just doing guard duty. Um, so yes, there are operations, and I think where I was uh, possibly the least operational action, <laughs> one of the places with the least operational action, but uh, that that's most of what uh, combat soldiers are doing right now. We're, we're guarding. How long were you there in total? Yeah. You arrived the I end was of there October? I left December 19th, I believe. So almost two years. months. Yeah, is there for two wow. months? Almost two months. Wow. And are you able to call home? Are you like, is are you uh, active all day? I mean, your wife is back in Toronto. Uh, like, what's yeah. that like? So it is kind of strange. It's definitely a change of mindset. Um, you're. I'm not active all day. Um, I mean, yes, I'm on. Uh, I'm ready all day, as in you're in uniform um if you're not doing a training session like karab maga or a workout session um or sleeping then you're in uniform and you're you're ready to go and there's always uh, you know all the guys who just got off of guard duty are on um readiness they're on a quick reaction force essentially i think they call it in the us um you're on a qrf i guess um ready in case there's a uh some sort of uh emergency that comes up so, so while you were there the i mean i don't know hours. if you're allowed to talk were, were there any emergencies did any did, did you have any we interaction had, we had two when i was there um but nothing came of it there was one there we had an issue so we had a driven patrol for uh for a period of i think a month three weeks we had two days a week we had a driven patrol that we got to go out on that we got to run which was a little bit of excitement a little bit of operational activity that wasn't just guard duty so that was that was really good and on that we had we had plenty of uh plenty of things to do um you know whether arresting hamas uh um supporters and whatever it is um or uh yeah the different different operational activities um but basically the, the unfortunately it was ended because there was an attempted um uh what do you call it i, I can think of these things in hebrew now my brain hasn't yet processed it in english now but basically uh, a terrorist tried running the running our uh, army jeep off of the road um i wasn't in it at the, at the time but that is that basically ended our our one thing that took us out of the the guard duty, mm -hmm. perpetual guard duty, um, and there were shootings on the you know near and the, on the road near us, and there were different things happening. But you know that's basically as much emergency activity we had. Besides for drills, we had a lot of drills. 
Mm -hmm. which, uh, yeah. Okay, well, we're going to, you know, sort of let you go. We appreciate it. If somebody wants to unmute and jump in with a brief, uh, appropriate question, now would be your chance. Otherwise, we're going to thank Moshe for his service. Thank God you're home, safe and sound. Um, let me ask you this. You know, here in the U.S., I'm sure you've heard about the reports and the craziness and the protests. Are you experiencing that in Canada as well? Is that going on there too? Absolutely. Would, if you're going on with this, uh, they're shutting yeah. down the airports and, and everything. Have you personally had any encounters like that as a result of your returning? Did anybody show up at your doorstep or get any comments or any or anything that, uh, any backlash there? Me personally, not yet. Okay. I'll say not yet because I've only been in Toronto. This is going to be my third day since I got back, my third full day since I got back. Um, so... But uh, I mean, I'm sure it's going to happen. I've my wife just came home saying that the sign there's a sign on the street that I live on, literally up the block. Um, it says that we're sister cities with Romley, Israel, and apparently the entire word Israel was egged. Right. So um, it's just yeah, that's so that's what's happening. All right. So again, unless someone else has a question or something they want to jump in, we're going to thank Moshe. Thank you for your service. Thank you for staying up late and joining us and giving us a sense of it. We really, really are grateful to you for what you've done for Eretz Yisrael and for B'nai Yisrael and for sharing it with us here tonight. So God bless. Keep you safe and all of our soldiers. We daven for them as we all do all around the world. And when you speak to your uh, to your buddies, you tell them that Klal Yisrael is 100% behind them, davening for them every day, till them and extra tzedakah, and we are confident that Hashem will make them the agents of absolute victory. So, good night to you, thank you, and tomorrow night, everybody, will learn some Mimers and Baslagani, and thank you, Moish, we really, really appreciate all that you've done, thank you for joining us tonight, thank you. Great night, thank you.